So, Brother Hartman and myself and Lucy are on our way to Whitehorse. It's about a 700-mile trip, and uh, we're going there because the circuit assembly is going to be held there next week. So we thought we'd go by car instead of fly, and uh, after the Whitehorse assembly, we're going to go on to Juno. We'll fly to Juno. Brother Hartman will come back, and he'll take care of the work at the branch. And Lucy and I will attend the assembly uh, with the brothers in Alaska Circuit Number 2. And then we'll fly back to Anchorage. So if you hear the rumbling of an automobile, it's because we're in the car now. I'm taking advantage of this tape recorder, which is an RCA tape recorder. We use the cassette cartridge, and uh, it's battery operated, so we're able to talk to you. Yes? What do you see? Oh, the tree's falling down. Oh, it looks like the wind blew down some of the trees. We have a cloudy day today, and the gusts of wind are pretty heavy. And alongside the road, we uh, saw some of the trees were blown over. That could happen up here, you know. Well, I think that uh, I could let you know that we're in good health, and we're having an enjoyable time in Alaska. The brothers are all excited about our circuit assembly. Uh, there are two airplanes, two DC-6s, right, Bob? And uh, they've been chartered. And next Friday morning, the uh, two plane loads of 150 brothers are going to fly from Anchorage into Whitehorse. And then uh, there's a group of brothers that are flying down from uh, Fairbanks. Uh, how far is that, Bob? Fairbanks to uh, Whitehorse is about uh, 600 or 650 miles by uh, car. It's a little shorter, of course, flying. We're uh, very pleased to see the response of the brothers to these assemblies. There's going to be about 100 automobiles on the road traveling to Whitehorse. By uh, car, I think I mentioned, it's about over 700 miles. So. Uh, the round trip would be about 1,500 miles when the brothers finally get back in their, to their home. So if any brothers down there think it's uh, out of the way to travel to a circuit assembly, you can let them know that the brothers here are putting forth an extra effort. Of course, we don't have the longest distance to travel because some of the brothers who are at Bethel, Alaska, They'll have to travel over 2,000 miles round trip to the assembly in Whitehorse. Of course, you know Whitehorse is in the Yukon area. It's in Canada, so they have to go across the border. They have to go through customs. And it's quite an exciting thing to be able to go to a circuit assembly and have to go through customs. The uh, brothers in Whitehorse are quite excited about the assembly because uh, they've never had such a large group in that town. And uh, some years ago, they had a circuit assembly of about 200 witnesses there, and they thought that was a good-sized circuit assembly. And now we're expecting probably 600, 700 brothers, all told, that will be there. So I'll tell you more about it after it happens, and I'm sure uh, you're going to be able to enjoy some of those experiences. You might want to get out the map that I sent, and then you could check it, and you'll be able to see the uh, distances and get some idea of what's involved. When you hear the click, that means I'm cutting off the speaker here because when I can't think of what I'm going to say next, I have to turn it off. I got a half hour tape and I want to take advantage of all the time without letting too much of the tape run by while I'm thinking. Hi, Mom and Dad. The last time uh, that Jerry sent you a tape, he did all the talking. And I know you wrote back and said, uh, how come Lucy didn't do any talking? So before Jerry gets uh, carried away and uses up all this tape, I thought I'd better say hello. We're having a, a real nice trip. We're uh, on the paved highway right now, but we're uh, riding along the mountains, all snow-capped, although the uh, ground now has very little snow on. We've uh, been experiencing what they call it. Uh, spring breakup, so the snow is almost melted. But uh, it's a cloudy day, as Jerry said, but uh, still the scenery is just beautiful. 
I think uh, it would be nice if uh, you could get to know Brother Hartman. Bob's going to say a few words to you. Hello, uh, Brother and Sister Ronco. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to uh, meet you as soon as possible. But in the meantime, at least uh, we can exchange a few words of greeting. Uh, you folks can be pleased to know that uh, we're very happy to have Jerry and Lucy with us here in the Alaska branch. And I think they're almost sourdoughs now. Of course, uh, sourdough means uh, sour on the country and you haven't got the dough to get out. No, it, <laughs> no, it really doesn't mean that. That's just, uh, that's just a joke. But uh, a sourdough is used for an old seasoned Alaskan or one in the North Country. It could be Alaska or the Yukon. But uh, all the brothers and sisters appreciate them very much, and uh, I am included in that. And we want you to know that I think they're doing well. Jerry hasn't put on any more weight, but uh, Lucy feeds him real well. And the other brothers and sisters, I think, look after them too. So uh, we enjoy having them here. By the way, uh, can you come up and visit us this July for our assembly? Uh, that certainly would be uh, a good opportunity for us to meet you and for you to meet all the brothers and sisters here too. Uh, I'm kind of excited about that myself because even though I've been here seven years, my parents have never been to Alaska and they might come up this summer too. So if you folks can come and if they can come, we'll just have a grand reunion with all the brothers and sisters from back east. My folks will be coming from Detroit. Well, uh, I better not use up all the tape. Jerry has a few more things he wants to say, but I appreciate being able to say hi to you folks. Since you're saying all those nice things about us, Bob, there's a lot more room on the tape. <laughs> Jerry and I have been having a, a good time in our teaching program. Uh, we've uh, certainly been enjoying uh, the privilege of having Bible studies again. Since uh, April, as you know, is a special month of activity, Jerry and I took advantage of inviting a few of our Bible studies out in the ministry, the ones that we felt were uh, ready and capable, and the boys are whispering so, but uh, Jerry uh, got a chance to take out two of uh, the men that he's studying with, and uh, they've both been out already twice this month, and seem to really be enjoying it. I've uh, took advantage of taking Karen out, the school teacher that I must have written to you about, and she came out twice, Friday and Saturday, and she spoke up for the second time on Saturday and was quite excited about it. It's uh, really a thrill to watch her because she developed a real appreciation for the truth and a real zeal. So when I uh, asked her today if she wanted to turn in her time, she said, oh, yes, if I can. She said, I really would like to. So she was dancing all over the floor because she had that opportunity. So we're enjoying the fine increases here in Alaska. I think in our congregation alone, we must have about 10 new praisers this month. So we're kind of excited. We're having quite large meeting attendances every Sunday. We're having about 170, 175. And uh, we have just about 100 publishers in our congregation. So you can see that we've got great potential. We, uh, Jerry gave the memorial talk. Uh, we, all three units uh, here in Anchorage met at a high school. And uh, Jerry gave the memorial talk. We had, uh, let's see, how many in attendance, Jerry? 658 in attendance. And all over uh, the uh, Anchorage area. Uh, the people attend, uh, came to that uh, to that uh, memorial celebration. We were very pleased with that attendance. Uh, How many there were six who partook throughout all of Alaska, the whole branch, and uh, four in the Anchorage area. We have a couple very young publishers uh, who have been able to show their desire for the heavenly calling or to. Uh, show that they have been chosen for the heavenly calling and uh, we have uh, let's see what else took place oh yes I was going to say that uh, the congregation asked the society for a loan 
of about $18,000. That was a rough bump there in the road, right, Bob? $18,000 to be able to remodel the Kingdom Hall. But uh, as we look at the situation here, the, the hall is so packed that either we have to make another unit or it might be more advantageous to have another new Kingdom Hall. So the brothers are talking about it. But right now, that's only in the talking stage. Nevertheless, Jehovah's blessing the work here, and it certainly is uh, showing signs of growth, just as it is in other parts of the earth, and we're very happy to see this. This month, the Alaska branch has 769 publishers. We think that's quite good, uh, 768, pardon me. And uh, we had uh, 1,958 for the memorial, and that makes us feel very uh, pleased because we can see what kind of blessings are in store for us. And I'm being kept busy too, I enjoy it. Although I'm only in the circuit work maybe one or two weeks out of the month since I've been up here, I had the chance to get acquainted with the brothers. But then I work in the branch, and then I do the pioneer work in the congregation. I serve as a Bible study servant, I serve as a literature servant, and I serve as a book study servant. So when I don't have anything to do, I sure can think of something that has to be done. And this is what makes us happy. And uh, Lucy is really pushing ahead very well in the pioneer work for 150 hours. She gets tired some days because she tries to put in 10 hour days. But she has to do that in order to have a day off where she could get the uh, clothes ironed and uh, maybe cook me a real good meal. And she's really been doing very well with the meals. She's been inviting so many of the friends in. And uh, right now we think maybe we better slow down on some of that because uh, she needs to have a little space for rest. But we're learning to pace ourselves and uh, we don't want you to worry about us because uh, we feel that Jehovah's spirit and blessing is with us in this very fine assignment with our brothers. Did you get the cards that I sent from Nome, Alaska? I was uh, very thrilled to be able to go up there. One of the brothers from the Palmer congregation, which is around 50 miles from Anchorage, had a business trip uh, to take to go to Nome, and he came by and he asked if there were any people of interest that he could visit while he goes to Nome. That's up near the Arctic Circle. And uh, I took advantage of the opportunity and I said I'd go with you, with him, and I went along with the brother. And uh, the city servant of Anchorage heard that I was going up to Nome and he decided to come along. And so on Monday afternoon, we left for Nome on Wien Airlines and we just stayed there for two days. And the purpose of the trip was to see whether we could get more work done there as far as the preaching is concerned. There is just one inactive publisher living, a baptized uh, p brother living in Nome, and we hadn't heard of him or from him for quite a long time. So we arrived there, and that evening we had a chance to uh, witness to the man who met the brother, the business partner of the brother who was going to Nome. And this man happened to be running for election. He was running for mayor, I should say, in the election. And uh, he was a little sad when we met him because he lost the election. And when he heard that we were ministers uh, uh, and we weren't involved in politics, he was quite impressed. And that evening we had supper together. And he sat with us and he told us of how he lost the election because there's one radio station in Nome and that radio station is run by the Covenant Church. And this church is really preaching to the people all day long and they can't get religion off their radio. And what happened is one of the men joined the church, became a member, and he got all the radio time he wanted. And that man was running for mayor. And the gentleman we were talking to, he couldn't get any radio time. They, they sold him 12 minutes during the whole election. And because the church gave the radio time to this other man, well, he had the best opportunity. Uh, so the opponent fell, and thereby uh, 
the mayor, Mayor Perkins, won the election. So we talked to him about how the churches are out of their place, and he could really see that, especially because he was given what he thought was a raw deal. But during the week, this man really warmed up to us. He talked with us. He uh, discussed uh, a few religious points, and he really got a good impression of the witnesses. He drove us over various areas of Nome. He took us on a sightseeing tour, and he really got close and uh, appreciative of the work that we're And as I was saying, this man was very appreciative of the work that Jehovah's Witnesses are doing. Now that evening, Brother Daly called up the judge of Nome, and uh, we wanted to have an opportunity to talk with him to tell him about the purpose of Jehovah's Witnesses and their preaching work. And uh, the judge wasn't home, but his wife said, you can come down and talk to me. And uh, we made an appointment to go down, and that evening we went down after supper, and uh, she had her neighbor there, and she listened to the message that uh, we gave her about the kingdom hope, about the new system of things, about the kingdom already being established, and they asked questions for two hours. They took the truth book, and they were very thrilled to know that Jehovah's Witnesses had a realistic attitude uh, towards the uh, purposes of God, that uh, even we could see that the system of things was not going to be the answer, and that the churches were not helping the people. And they were outspoken on the fact that the churches and the community there in Nome were not really the answer for that community's future progress. So when we left there, we felt pretty good because we had an opportunity to witness, and Brother Daly uh, had uh, made an arrangement to meet her husband, who incidentally was serving in the court in Anchorage. And uh, this judge, incidentally, was the one that handled the court cases back in the uh, 19, early 1950s or late 1948, which gave Jehovah's Witnesses the privilege to do the house-to-house -house work in Anchorage. And right now, or I should say all of Alaska, and right now Jehovah's Witnesses are the only ones who go from house to house in doing the preaching work. Uh, business organizations are not allowed to have their members canvas from door to door. But Jehovah's Witnesses have that freedom of uh, speech and freedom of religion. Well, the next morning we uh, thought we would take advantage of the opportunity to go see the uh, the people in the town, and we did some house-to-house -house work. We had an opportunity to uh, visit some of the natives. Nome has 80% Eskimos, but the whole town is run by the white man, and he comes up there and he takes over, and the government pours money into those towns. Nome is about the size of Rosetto, so you can imagine what it was like to be up there, and uh, it was uh, evident that Excuse the interruption, but there was some falling rock coming down off the mountain, and we could see where the rock knocked the uh, railing over. And as we looked up along the side of the mountain, there was some rocks rolling right down by the car, but they were only pebble size. So that got us a little excited. But, uh, you know, Mom and Dad, that's Alaska. Rugged territory, you know. Feel sorry for us and all that, huh? <laughs> well, back to the story. The... Uh, day we were talking to the people in the, in the community there, we found out that they weren't being helped very much by the churches, and we talked pretty directly to them because we don't know when we're going to get up there again. So we just asked them if they felt that the churches had the answer to the world problems. We told them we did not feel that they had the answers and that God's kingdom was not really being explained by the churches of Christendom today. And the people sort of like that direct approach. During that day, we uh, were in the one area there, and Brother Daly called me, and he says, come on, he says, let's go across the street, and let's go talk to the man in that house. And Brother Daly didn't know who lived in that house, but he noticed that there was an oil business running there next door, and he thought it might be nice to talk to the businessman. And we knocked at the door, 
were we surprised when the man came and he told us after we introduced ourselves he said that he was Mr. Perkins and that was of all people the mayor of the town and Mr. Perkins invited us in and uh, we sat there told him that we were Jehovah's Witnesses and we asked him what the religious situation was in the town we told him that we weren't there to build the church but uh, we wanted to know whether the people in the town uh, would appreciate it if we sent someone there in the summer or in the fall and offered free home Bible study arrangement. And he told us that in this town of Nome, he says, there are seven churches and there are seven bars. That seems to be the saying up in that area. So I said, Mr. Perkins, we know that there are people here who have their church and they're satisfied. And we know that there are people here who have the bar and they're satisfied. What we'd like to know from you, Mr. Perkins, is do you think that there is anyone in this town that might be disgusted with the churches, disgusted with the bars, and still have a love for God and a love for righteousness? And that's the type of people that we would be looking for. Well, he smiled, he thought for a moment, and he said, Yes, I do believe those people are in this town. He says, as a matter of fact, I'd like to think that I'm that one of those people. And we were surprised at what he said. And then he followed through, and of all things, he told us that he had no use for the church that he belonged to. And remember, this is the man that used the radio station to get the uh, election speeches across to the public. And he told us, he says, I'm a member of the Covenant Church here. He says, but I'm only a member. I only support it financially. He says, I do not support it religiously. And when we heard that, we said, my, if his opponent ever knew what he said to us. So little did each one know that we were friends of the mayor or of the man who was running for mayor in the election. But nevertheless, we didn't spill the beans, but we just thought about it for a few minutes and it was an interesting experience to see how behind the scenes these men are using the churches and the churches are really putting their foot in it. They're stepping out of their bounds and they're getting involved in, in uh, interest that does not belong to them. Well then the uh, next day, or it might have been the same day I might get my timing mixed up we decided that it was maybe a good thing if we went to see the chief of police. So, we wanted to know how we could find the chief of police. And no sooner did we, did we come out of the hotel, and we saw this big man walking towards us, and we noticed right away that he was the chief of police. And we said, Chief, we'd like to talk to you. If we could, we're uh, new in town. And he says, well, why not right now? He says, come on down to my office. He says, that's where I'm going. And we had a chance to witness to him. We showed him the truth book, the article on the uh, Christian's obedience to the law. And he took the truth book and he appreciated it very much. And we asked him, you know, whether the work of the Jehovah's Witnesses would be effective in the town. In other words, we were trying to get the feel of what the church fathers thought about the uh, work of the witnesses. And he says, well, he says, I'll tell you. He says, most of my problem here is not with big crime or with organized crime. He says, my problems are mo mainly with families that belong to the churches. He says, it isn't unusual for them to call me up, for mothers and fathers to call me up and ask me to go down and give their children a good talking to so that they would obey. And he says, it really surprises him that these churches have been helping these people for so many years by preaching and the people themselves haven't been able to apply that in their everyday life. So the chief of police welcomed us and uh, he was very much impressed with our approach and we feel that that town will be able to have a good witness this uh, fall. We're not going to work it during the summer because so many tourists go to Nome the airlines uh, are encouraging people to go to Nome. It's only about 160 miles from Siberia, and that's up near the Arctic Circle. 
and they have quite a few uh, tourist attractions in that area. So we're going to work it during the fall season when the tourists drop off, and we're going to be able to see what we can do to get to witness to that area. But that same day, we went over to the hospital, and we made an offer. We asked for an appointment to talk to the chief, the head surgeon there, and uh, this was Dr. Chung. He was a Korean man, and we went to see him, and we told him about our work, and he says, well, he knows about uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. He says uh, he had training. He went to He went to Temple University and he studied there. And then he says that he was in New York uh, working in the Brooklyn Hospital under Dr. McGregor. And I says, well, I know Dr. McGregor because I talked to him this summer. He's a doctor that operated on Mr. Knorr. And Dr. McGregor uh, has a high regard for Jehovah's Witnesses. And he says, oh, yes, he says, we know because uh, he says, I worked with Dr. McGregor and some of the Bethel patients would come over to our hospital. So we told him about our work of trying to teach people the Bible. We said, we're not here to get people back to the churches. We said, we're here to get people back to the Bible. And we feel that the problem is that the churches are making people think that they're Christian. And we believe that people have to learn the Word of God before they can ever come close to being a Christian. And he said, you can have your magazines come to this hospital. As soon as you get back, you can mail them to me, and I'll see to it that they're put here. He says, even though this is a Methodist hospital, he says, I'll make sure that those magazines aren't thrown out. So by the end of the day, then, we called up... There's a moose down here. here. Where's the mirror moose? Oh, look at that, a moose in the water. And I was looking for a long time to see something like that. Three of them? Three of them. No, I no they're not three. That's the stump. There's one moose waiting in the water, and uh, if I had my camera, I'd be able to take a picture of it. Well, it's pretty far away. The conclusion of that whole matter was that there were two moose, a mama and her baby. It's like the brother said this morning in the public talk. He says there are no zoos in Alaska. They don't need them. All you have to do is take a ride a few miles out and you'll see some of the marvelous creation of Jehovah. The uh, beauties of all these animals as well as the rugged mountains. And that's something that really impressed us when we got up here. How you could see these mountains jutting out all over from various sides. And the rugged beauty really makes you feel close to Jehovah. That evening, we called up this brother who was baptized about 10 or 11 years ago. And uh, we were surprised when he told us that he was reading the Bible when we called. And he came down to our motel, and we talked to him about the truth. And we asked him if he still believed that Jehovah was the true God. And he says, yes, I do. And we asked him if he ever got involved in any churches uh, since he met the witnesses uh, and was with the witnesses years ago. And he says, no, he says, I know the kingdom is still the only hope for mankind. We wish we could encourage him to be a stronger witness because he doesn't do any witnessing. He has fear of man. And so Brother Daly invited him to come down to the assembly this summer in Anchorage in July. And uh, we are making arrangements for him to stay there for about a month so that we could really train him. Yes, I didn't say it, but he is a native. He's an Eskimo boy. Of course, he's 30-some years of age. But uh, he uh, needs a help and encouragement. But we're going to go up there. As I mentioned, this fall, Jehovah willing, it certainly seemed as though his angels were leading us to the town fathers, and thereby we have a good idea of the opportunity for a thorough witness in the town of Nome. This gave us a, a real thrill to be able to go up to this area to visit the people and to know what aspects there are for the preaching work in the near future. All in all, we talked to the judge's wife, we talked to the chief of police, we talked to the mayor, 
We talked to the politician who was opposing the mayor. We talked to the chief surgeon. We talked to the uh, natives in the community. And we talked to the businessmen in town. And we feel that uh, this gave us a wonderful opportunity to set a little bit of a groundwork for the preaching work in the months ahead. And oh yes, we even talked to the school teachers who were in that area. Oh yes. Uh, Brother Daly talked to a minister, I witnessed to a nun, and uh, we uh, didn't witness to all the school teachers, but a few who are in that area. We're sorry that we're not communicating with you by letter as much as you are with us, Mom. We really appreciate the letters, and we appreciate the uh, encouragement you give us. And Daddy, it's so encouraging to know that you're still taking your studies very seriously. This tape has almost run out, but it's been very much of a pleasure talking with you, and I hope you could use it and return some words to us and let us know how it was received. The tape works better when we're not in a car, but uh, you can get used to the noise of the air uh, going by and the motor noise, but I hope that you feel that this is still better than not being able to write to you at all. Well, I'll have to say so long for now, and so long for from Lucy too and from Bye. Bob Bye. and uh, let us know how everything is going and give our love to everyone and we send our love to you mom and dad and Marie and Don, Stephen and David